actually right you know in the in the article they do talk about both the positives and the negatives of kind of the fan, of fantasizing right because it could be reframed in both ways of like what hope does to somebody mm -hmm. if you spend too much time in the future um, and I really liked kind of um, they had a quote from I think uh, uh, here I'll read it to you the, the quote is the important thing about imagination is that it gives you optimism. And that was a quote from Martin Seligman, who's a professor that they had um, interviewed for, I guess, this article. Um, and, and that word optimism, so important. You know, when we talk about hope, what really it is, uh, the core value of hope is optimism. So th these opportunities that we have by, by thinking about what we can do in the future, what we want for the future, what we can visualize and what we can see ourselves doing is opportunity. Mm -hmm. that's what I think like really the visualization like visual visualizing something or having hope for something that's not tangible but opportunity is an actual thing that that can happen yeah and I, I think that's such a great way of putting it is that is the piece that we can latch on to because the idea of like it'll get better is like well what does that mean like that's so vague I don't understand what that means but putting it in the context of like there will be different opportunities. There will be things that happen that feels so much more concrete and, and just really plausible. Yeah, it, and um, so I guess this, the person, like I said, that they had interviewed this um, professor, he, he works in positive psychology. So specifically like identifying, when, like we were talking about earlier, not only thinking about the, the possibilities that might be negative or like minimizing your opportunity, uh, not opportunity, sorry, minimizing the abilities that you might have to make sure that you're not overshooting or, or mm -hmm. making your expectations too high. It's actually making those opportunities bigger so you can actually perceive yourself as getting some of these things. So mm -hmm. um, what it, it talks about is making these concrete plans. So, you know, mm, like we talked about seeing friends or you know, when the pandemic's over, I really want to eat inside a restaurant. I want to go to um, a mall and try on clothes or, or whatever it might be. Putting that into fruition as a, a goal, like an actual, put the words out there of like what you actually want to do and set it as a thing, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, I want to do something, I guess, like less, like you said, less vague, less, I don't know what the word is, like less. Like an actionable plan. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. I mean, we could definitely talk about more like actionable steps and things that are actually true and can happen. Like one of the things I would love to do that I have not done in a very long time is go on a vacation. I could sit here and fantasize about like my dream, you know, out of country kind of vacation or I could set up a reasonable expectation and have an action plan in place to do something like wine tasting in Northern California. That is far more affordable than trying to go like out of the country. And But I, I think what this makes me think of is the idea of having something actionable, like the thing you're going to do, like going and seeing people, going and eating at a place or traveling or whatever it may be. But I think there's also a degree of maybe almost like permission sometimes it feels like we need to give ourselves to have that that fantasy of like oh I'm gonna get there like this is gonna be what I'll be doing soon because I, I think in holding hope and holding optimism it can be hard when it feels like there's not there's not a date or a time when that's gonna happen and I know like I'm, I'm sure a lot of us are having like pandemic fatigue like this has been a long time where we're still wondering when this is going to be a big difference in, in resuming the way things were before. And I, I think that's okay. I think that's a piece to talk about is like, it's okay to have these hopes and these wants and dreams and to sometimes be like, when is that going to happen though? And being able to accept both sides of it. I, I mean, I also wonder how this can relate to like other areas of, of people fantasizing about things, right? Because I know we're talking about tangible, like real life examples, but the idea of fantasizing about things is not, this is not exclusive to this time, point in time. Like it's mm -hmm. something that people have been doing for, throughout history, as far as we know, like through art, through writing, through games, different things like that. And I, I think there's probably such a systemic benefit we get from that. Absolutely. Otherwise, yeah, why would we be doing it for such a long time? There's some purpose to it. 
Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think there's a segment in the, the article, sorry, I was just like brushing over it right now. They do talk really about how that impacts you in the moment and having this, this is actually a skill that you can learn, something that you develop over time and having the skill to fantasize, the skill to be positive about your future and to visualize something, whether that's big, big ticket items, things that are um, imaginative imagining yourself doing something that's impossible impossible or, or big mm-hmm. or we're mm-hmm. talking about like action items whatever that might be it does impact you in the moment it talks about this positive thinking impacts your emotion engagement relationships mm-hmm. meaning and accomplishments mm-hmm. so what you what you put in your brain now for the future impacts how you are going to act which makes sense mm-hmm. to me so i'm wondering how you know how we implement this in our daily lives if we're, if we're here and we're having really positive thoughts about where we're going to be tomorrow or even in a couple of hours, mm-hmm. as opposed to having maybe not even having any thoughts about where we're going to be tomorrow, right? What does that look like? Well, I think, I mean, I'm thinking about like what Katie was saying and what you're saying about practicing this as a skill. I think one of the one of the best ways I can think of to practice this sort of skill would be like role-playing games, like some D and D action. I haven't had a chance to play in a long time. So yeah, like I, I miss playing D and D and I think it's, it's a really, if you have a good group of people, because I have played it with not so great groups of people, Mm -hmm. but if you have a good group, then it's, you can have a lot of fun with it and you can really practice like putting yourself in someone else's shoes and maybe you're not able to think of anything happy or whatever for yourself, but it might be easier to think of for this other, not real, but someone that you made up person. And that in itself is also like, maybe it's not something you're thinking about in your future, but that's a parallel thing that you are fantasizing about or something that you perceive yourself doing or something that you've created. So I think there's a lot of value in that as well. And a lot of creativity goes into creating characters, creating, uh, visualizing spaces when it comes to like D&D or even um, Minecraft games, roadblocks, other games where you have to Mm -hmm. create spaces, Animal Crossing. So I think that it's really, it's valuable. It's valuable for us to allow ourselves the place and time to develop in the in this way well i mean if you think about it so oftentimes it's actually it can oftentimes be easier to have that hope for other people where it's like like we can hold it for them or like oh you're gonna get through this like i believe in you and and then a lot of times when we do it for ourselves we're like i don't know about this so but i think this mimics that same idea of like through taking on these roles it it can even be easier maybe to hold that hope because you're like I, I am this person or I, I'm playing through this person and, and being able to kind of view it differently, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, when you were saying that, Katie, it just reminded me of like how when you're playing D&D, at least this has happened to me in watching my husband play because he does some really random stuff. So it's like the, the expectation is when you say your character does something, your expectation is positive. That your character is going to do that thing but then you roll the dice and then the dice decide if you actually do that thing or not so you're able to have this hope that you'll do those things that you're you say your character is going to do and then it may or may not happen and it's mm-hmm. not really any fault of your own although you could totally put your dice in dice jail <laughs> it's just what happens happens and it's so interesting that you say it that way, Cassie, because think about, I, I'm thinking about just like the reactions that typically I have or that like others have when like it doesn't go their way. Fonts of like, I mean, it's frustration, but it's frustration in a way where it's palatable or it's almost funny or it's like, I can handle this. Like, okay, well, it happened, you know, like let we're, we're just going to breeze through this and you know um, it, it's not a fault of my own or my characters and it just happened the way it happened and can you imagine if if we all just went through life that way just like 
-hmm. I want to do this thing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to perceive or think about it or like make all these presumptions of how it's going to go first. I'm just going to say, I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to roll the dice, let it happen. And if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, oh, well, how much yeah. time and energy and white hair would we save? <laughs> my goodness it's it's such a great idea though because it, it it's true like when we play games and like like the example we we're giving here is we have a belief that no matter what happens we can handle it and I think that's what's so different and so oftentimes what we need to be able to have in our own lives is that belief of like even if I roll this dice in this moment in my real life and it doesn't go the way I expect I believe I can still handle this. I can still take care. And like, yeah, how much energy that would save us, how much stress and time, because I think so oftentimes anxiety comes from the fear of like, I don't think I got this. Like, I don't think I can do this. I don't believe that I'm going to be able to survive whatever the situation is. But when you're playing a game like D&D, you know you're going to get through it one way or another. Well, your character might die. Mm -hmm. One way or another. <laughs> yeah. So... So is that what we need to do? Do we have to identi identify ourselves as characters? Or do we have to fantasize about who we are and what we can handle? Well, I wonder what makes it different in like a, a, like a character role versus real life role where we can, and this is not obviously for everyone, but we have sometimes the ability to more easily believe they can make it through. Is it because we feel like the stakes are lower? Is it because we, we believe it. Like, I wonder what the characteristics are that are different that make it easier to do it in that capacity. Well, Cassie, you know a little bit about this, right? Like, cause this has a lot to do with like superhero theory, right? And su superhero therapy. Well, I mean, I think, well, for superhero therapy, it's more about like the hero's journey and often correlating like your own personal journey to a hero in comics or something. What I, I think this, touches more on what it makes me think of at least is how people tend to like have negative connotations for themselves even if it's something that they have no actual control over oh I missed the paperwork deadline because I'm lazy instead of just kind of brushing it off and doing it they have a lot of the, they internalize the guilt whereas when it's just the random roll of the dice, I think people have an easier time letting that go and not taking personal responsibility for it. I don't know. I That would be my guess as to kind of what happens is just people have a lot of internalized guilt over everything. <laughs> and so people are more likely when they have a, a, a like personal failure to take it personally, even if it really had nothing or very little to do with them. So I wonder if it would be then helping people to really conceptualize when something in real life is more like a roll of a dice than your personal responsibility. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with society though. And like society saying that you're not supposed to see, perceive yourself that way. And I think that's like a universal thing almost. And like maybe in some, some places of the world, like a little bit more than others. So I'm not quite sure. I don't, I don't know how that would be addressed, but I definitely, I, I think you're both right in, in where that exists and where that lies. I just don't know how it would be addressed. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely like a very, like, even in talking about it, like, I'm, I'm like, how would you do that? Like, how do you conceptualize, like, was this something that I did versus was this something that just happened because it happened? And I, I think that we as humans tend to err on the side of trying to make sense of it, assume we did something so we can change our behavior so it doesn't happen again. So it's almost like our default to assume mm -hmm. it was our responsibility in some way. One of the things that would be helpful would be to utilize some thought stopping techniques. When you're starting to realize that you're spiraling like that, my easy go-to is think of a stop sign because your brain can only handle one thought at a time. So picture something and then ask yourself, if it's really something that, ask yourself how much control you actually had over the situation. And I have my lovely sign back behind me, which says the only person you can control is yourself. And if it had anything to do with other people, there you go. Mm -hmm. You can only control yourself in that situation. 
Yeah, that's very much my go-to too, especially with clients identifying like what you actually have control over versus what you feel like you have control over. Because I think sometimes Mm -hmm. we have this sense of these external things. Like I, it was my fault. I have to take responsibility for this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, did you really have control over that though? Like was, you know, we have to be fair to ourselves. And I think that's something that's, that we tend to not do when we don't have control over things. I think we shoulder that. We put that on ourselves because we look around and nobody else is taking responsibility. So we do it. And, Mm -hmm. and that's not okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, definitely control is a big thing. Being fair to ourselves is a big, you know, being kind to ourselves a hundred percent and just allowing things to be what they are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not fair. And, and kind of bringing it back to the idea of like having a fantasy of the, of the way you would like things to be. I, I can imagine in a moment like that, like we said, if there's like a spiraling effect and you're, you're getting really wrapped up in it is sometimes we just need to pause. And we, we like, like, we, like Cassie, you were saying with the stop idea, and that could be a moment to insert, what do I want? Like, what is my fantasy? Like, you know, go, you know, sometimes it can sound silly, but having that like happy place we go to where it's like, oh, I would, I would love this. I would love the vacation. I would love, you know, this time with family and, and taking that moment and being in that space. Cause so oftentimes that's, we just need that break. Our system needs a moment to get away from the stress and go to that happy place. Mm-hmm. And we always have control over that. I think sometimes we don't feel like we can ask for that, but in mm-hmm. any situation, you can always step away. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if not physically, you, you have the capacity within yourself to get that moment back from it. 